and welcome to To The Point. And I'm really excited about this fourth series in the sixth day of creation that we've been having over the last four programmes. Now we've got day six today and we've got Dr Richard Kent again. Mm -hmm. Hello Richard. Hi. <laughs> to take us through day six of creation, which is the animals and of course our very, very old ancestors, Adam and Eve. So on day six, God created animals and man. And in Genesis 1, 24, 25, it says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Each animal was created according to its kind. Hmm. So that's the first part of the creation. And then the second part, Richard, and we've got two fun facts. We got Genesis 1, 26 to 27, when God created man, and it says, then God said, let us, that's Elohim, make man in our image according to our likeness. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And Genesis 2, 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. <laughs> awesome. That's where we come in, isn't it? Yes. Shall we go straight to the fun facts on the creation of Adam, or would you like to say something no, just before that? No, we need to that? do some, just do the, the, the animals first. The I animals, think. So we can do course. some pictures first. I'm I so think. excited about getting to us, aren't we? <laughs> 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 okay. Let's talk about the animals, Richard. Let's talk about that, so we can see the first picture. Yeah. Well, um, there we have the animals uh, created on the first part of day six. In day five, God had already created the birds and the fish, and we made the point that birds do not change into fish, and fish don't change into birds. Well, God created on day six all the animals. And they're all different. Um, it says and different kinds of animals. We, we tend to talk about species, and there we have species of elephants and species of tigers and lions and giraffes and all the rest. And the thing is that uh, all these animals uh, don't change into other animals because, in the, uh, if we look at the next picture, they all have their own DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acids, which is the most, most uh, incredibly powerful geometric code in the universe. There is no uh, genetic, there's no code of any sort that's even remotely as powerful as DNA. And all animals have their own DNA. Chimpanzees have their own DNA. Um, whales have their own DNA. Um, lions and zebras and giraffe have their own DNA. And uh, lions and zebras and giraffe do not change into different animals because they all have their own um, type of DNA. Um, there's what are called um, a pool of genes. For example, dogs. Dogs have a pool of genes. And I'm sure you've noticed, everybody's seen, that you have tall dogs and short dogs. and uh, dogs with long legs, short legs, long tails, short tails, and dogs um, with long hair, short hair, and loud barks, and tiny little squeaks. But the thing is that you can breed dogs with the dogs, but you can't breed dogs with cats. It just doesn't work. Um, and because uh, the, they're all um, separated by God into different species. Now, th um, let me tell you a little bit about DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, it is so powerful and so tiny that it is a complete miracle. Remember that uh, in the case of humans, but it applies also to all the animals, um, if you were to uh, remember uh, when the, the egg and the um, sperm come together, you get one single cell with 46 chromosomes in it, and that has all the genetic information for all the 100 trillion cells in our body in, within that one single uh, strand of 20, uh, 46 chromosomes. Um, just unbelievable. It's even, for example, in the case of ladies, it's even the number of, of eggs in the ovary in that one cell. The design is already incorporated 
in that one single cell. Now, um, uh, Charles Darwin does love to go talk, talk about his origin of species, published in 1859. He went to uh, the Galapagos Islands, which is 600 miles uh, to the west of South America, and he studied different species of finch. We don't need to go into the details, but it did not prove evolution, at least not macroevolution. What he saw was microevolution, which is variation within a species. What he actually saw was beaks, uh, beaks of finches with long beaks, long beaks, short beaks, wide beaks and thin beaks. In fact, they all look very similar and people have been to the Galapagos Islands recently and they say, well, okay, there are lots of different types of finch but they all look vaguely the same. Well, the answer is they've all got a gene pool and what actually um, Charles Darwin observed was not macroevolution, which is one type of species changing into another type of species. He didn't see a finch changing into, uh, into a snake. He didn't see a finch changing into a fish. What he saw were different types of, um, different types of finch, there are 14 of them he observed, which um, uh, because of different factors, um, develop different types of beaks because the different types of beaks are within the gene pool of the DNA of finches. So let's dispense with this evolution stuff. It's absolute garbage of the first order. No, what we have is a genetic code created by God. When we, di when we die, uh, yes, we're made of 66 chemicals, and we have a spirit living within us, our physical body dies. But the original code, the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is with God in the third heaven. And it's no problem for him, whatever, to give us a new resurrection body, which will be different from this body, um, using and um, modifying the genetic code which is already created for humans. So let's move on to the next slide. Now, we come on to spirits now, and probably the simplest way to talk about Adam and Eve is to show, first of all, uh, a fun fact about Adam. So let's move straight on to a fun fact about the creation of Adam. Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Uh, today I thought it would be wonderful to talk from a scientific point of view about how God created the original living being, Adam, um, and also when he created him and how he created him. So I want to start off by reading to the appropriate scripture. Uh, the scripture comes from Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So the first thing I want to point out is the word there, it says the Lord God, it said God created, the word is Elohim in Hebrew, that's plural. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's actually plural. It's they said, God said, let us make man in our own image. So Father God and Holy Spirit uh, created the original Adam and Eve. Now the first question is, what exactly did they create? Well, we're told that God is spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. So I believe that they, that they created the spirit of Adam and the spirit of Eve, which is why there's another uh, scripture in chapter 2 when it says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his spirit the breath of life, and man became a living being. So, what's going on here? Well, uh, God is not a living being. You and I, we're living beings, but God is a spirit. So what actually happened is God used DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and using that um, genetic code um, formed uh, the anatomy of Adam from the dust of the ground. Adam, the word Adam implies red and includes blood. 
Um, and this was a perfect man, but without any life in him, because we're told in the book of James, the body without the spirit is dead. Um, and then it says the Lord God, now that's Jesus Christ, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, 66 elements by the way, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. A man became a living being. So what actually happened? Well, this is what I believe happened. I believe the Lord God, Jesus Christ, uh, took the um, spirit of Adam that was created in Genesis 1 and breathed into the nostrils of this um, inanimate, perfect body of Adam on the ground, into his nostrils, the breath of life, in other words, the spirit of Adam, and Adam then became a living being. Um, so that's how I believe um, Adam was created. Now, the next question is, when was Adam created? Well, the answer is 6,000 years ago, and the, the scriptures are very precise about that. In Luke chapter 3, there is the genealogy of Adam, um, from Adam all the way down to Jesus Christ, and it's 77 generations, which is roughly about 4,000 years. And of course, Jesus was born about 2,000 years ago. Um, so Adam to Jesus Christ, Adam to Jesus is 4,000 years, Jesus to now is 2,000 years. But, uh, but uh, Jesus actually also said in Mark 10:6. It says that Adam was created at the beginning of the whole of creation. So the whole of creation is 6,000 years ago. So that's how the first human being was created. Thanks for listening and God bless. Welcome back. And that was fascinating about Adam. Mm -hmm. Now, Richard, have you got any more to add before we go to the scripture on the creation of Eve and well, then the fun facts? Well, just simply to point out that the name Adam appears in the New Testament several times. Some people think Adam is some sort of uh, fairy story. No, Jesus talked about Adam. Uh, Paul talked about Adam. Um, so there we are. Um, Jesus is either telling the truth. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Or... It's a fairy story. I, I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Adam was the first person, the first living being that God created. And now we get to hear about the second yes. human, being, human <laughs> being that God created, and her name was Eve. And this is found in Genesis 2, verses 21 to 22. And it states that, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. Mm -hmm. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh in its place. And then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into woman, and he brought her to the man. Hmm. Fascinating. I've just been listening to Derek Prince, and he has uh, lots of, obviously he's, he's now in heaven, <laughs> but his, his, his sermons and talks li live on. And I've just been listening to one of his talks on how God brought him and his two wives the first wife died and then he remarried and That's she right. also died and how he brought them together and, and this particular um, place where he says and God presented Adam and Eve to Adam and how in his life as well that God presented the wives one you know, obviously at a time <laughs> <laughs> to to him very very interesting very very um, it's very very moving really I find mm. that um, that God said it's not good for man to be alone, and mm. therefore he created Eve for Adam to be his helper. But we're going to go to the fun facts, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Hello, my name's Richard Kent. Uh, today I thought it'd be nice to, to talk from a scientific point of view about exactly how God created Eve the first woman. Now, of course, Adam had already been created, the first living being. And um, remember in Genesis 1, it says, The Lord, uh, it said, Elohim, God said, Let us make man in our own image, male and female created he them. And I believe that in Genesis 1, 
God created the spirit of Adam and the spirit of Eve. Because God, after all, is a spirit, and if he created something in his exact likeness, therefore he created the spirit of Adam and the spirit of Eve. Now I want to read a scripture to you now about exactly how God created Eve. It actually comes from Genesis 2 verses 21 and 22. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. Now the first thing I want to tell you is that God was the first anaesthetist, put uh, Adam into a deep sleep and then took something from the side of Adam. The word in Hebrew is cellar um, and actually it doesn't mean a rib at all because uh, men and ladies both have 12 ribs on the left side and 12 ribs on the right side. Now the word is cellar and we know that because for example the Ark of the Covenant's got a cellar same word, and it's talking about the side of the Ark of the Covenant. So what, what actually happened here is that the Lord God took something, tissue in other words, from the side of Adam and did a tissue transplant and then modified the DNA. Now, of course, you know, we all have 100 trillion cells in our bodies, um, give or take a few trillion. In each single cell um, is the deoxyribonucleic acid, which is the, which is the uh, genetic code for all of the 100 trillion cells in our bodies. Now, God actually did something very profound. He changed the, uh, the DNA of Adam, a man, into the DNA of a woman, a woman, a man with a womb. Um, so there were some quite profound physiological changes, anatomical changes, um, so that, for example, a lady can have a child in her uterus. Um, so God actually did a tissue transplant, and from this tissue then created, using this tissue then created Eve. So Eve wasn't created in the same way as Adam was. Now we'll remember that in the case of Adam, that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, when the Lord God, Jesus Christ, again took tissue uh, from the side of Adam, put Adam into a deep sleep, he then formed the physical body of Eve, Probably, probably again using the dust of the ground, we don't know because it doesn't say, but I suspect, but I don't know, that Jesus Christ also breathes into this body the spirit of Eve. Because all of us have a spirit inside us, and we're told in the book of James that the body without the spirit is dead. So, I believe that uh, the, Lord, the Lord God, that's Jesus Christ, whenever it says Lord God uh, in the Old Testament, that's talking about Jesus, uh, breathed into this uh, newly created body of Eve, different from Adam, the spirit of Eve, and Eve became a living being. And also, uh, uh, God purposely made Eve very, very attractive to Adam, and also made sure that Adam was very attractive to Eve. And things haven't changed much, have they? Thanks for listening, and God bless. God is a matchmaker, is he not? <laughs> Richard. <laughs> quite fascinating, quite fascinating. And it's, it's interesting, you're talking about how God transformed Adam's DNA. And of course, of male and female DNA, we've got the XY chromosomes for the man and the XX chromosomes for the for the women mm. like completely different in, in in uh, in the characteristics um, but god is god is god is a god is amazing and as you said um eve was a woman a man with a womb mm -hmm. and of course god gave us the ability to have children mm. and it is quite a privilege isn't it really
to be able to bear a child and carry another human being for nine months or, you know, nine plus one week or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who had to be induced because she was a bit late and it was, everybody was yeah. getting really worried. But it, that's it's just fascinating and it's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And we can see the blueprint of creation right there in us and how we're different, physically different, but also how God has given us some unique characteristics which are for his glory. Amen. And so we come to the end of day six, uh, the creation of the animals and then Adam and Eve. And do you think we'll be able to get on to day seven, which is yes, I think an amazing we've got time day? To cover. We got some time to yes. talk about day seven. And day seven, of course, is the day that God said, enough already, I've done it all, my best work on day six, it's time for me to rest. And I'll just um, read uh, the passage on that. And it's taken from Genesis 2, 1 to 3. And he said, so thus, this is a summary now, thus the heavens, the earth, and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Shabbat Shalom, Richard. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and of course in the Jewish tradition, Shabbat is the day of rest yes. and it starts from Friday evening to sundown to sundown to sunset or was the yes. other way around. <laughs> Six o'clock. Six o'clock on Friday evening. Six o'clock Saturday. On Saturday evening. is their Shabbat. And then the Christians celebrate the Resurrection Day. Yes. Which is the next day. Which is the next day. But I think that's that's just um, a very worthwhile um, topic to discuss: the seventh day and the Sabbath rest, because God did say this is what to do, and so I think we we should do, and I think it's it's not an option. I think God is expecting us because we're following the blueprint of God and he did say rest is important for us. The Sabbath was made for man and mm. not man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath day is important. And I, 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 I'm sure you do observe a day of rest. Yes. And, and so do I. And uh, it's very mm. important to do that. Have you any comments on that? Yes, I'd like to come back to you in a moment. Okay. Um, yes, we do. My wife is very keen on the um, Jewish and Hebrew background of, of the Old and the New Testament. And yes, we do. Uh, four o'clock on Friday afternoons, we lay down, um, we, you know, we stop all our work and we have friends around and we actually usually have a, a brief Bible study and a prayer meeting about Israel usually. And then we have a, a Sabbath meal on Friday evening. And we try really hard not to do any work on Saturday. Um, we get together in a home because in the New Testament, the Book of Acts, the churches met in homes a lot, so we're very happy to meet in our home with our friends who are believers. Um, but I, we, I believe very strongly about having a rest because one thing that happened to me early on in my life and still easy to happen, I'm going to ask Laura about it in just a moment, is this phenomenon of busyness. Because if you're a Christian, um, you can very often find that Sunday can be the busiest day of the week because uh, there are so many meetings you ought to go to. You ought to go to this meeting, you ought to go to that meeting, you need to go to this meeting, you must do this, you must read that book, you must uh, be part of that prayer group, you must come to prayer for Israel on the Wednesday, you must come to the midweek prayer meeting, you must go to the house group, you must do... And you, before the end of, uh, if you do all these things, you're going to be exhausted like I was at one time in my life. And I was very comforted by one scripture, and I'm going to pass over to Laura in just a moment, and it says very clearly that Jesus only did those things which his father told him to. Because no doubt uh, the crowds were all saying, come here, come there, come there, come there. And Jesus didn't do all these other things that other people wanted to do. He simply focused on the things that his father told him to do. And that is so important. Laura. You know, that is, that is so, so important. And I think I was talking to you earlier that sometimes for us Christians, the devil, cannot lead us into sin easily because we have reached a certain maturity and you know the usual sins of whatever but he can actually 
miss or, or redirect our energies by getting us so busy that we're not hearing from God, we haven't got time to sit and be still. As God said, Mary chose the better path, even though Martha was insisting that, oh please, I need someone to help me in the kitchen to prepare the meals. Jesus actually said, Mary has chosen to sit at my feet and she's chosen the better part. And that must have been quite hurtful for Martha, who was trying to make sure everybody got fed. But as Christians, it is important, isn't it, Richard? And you've, you've been burned by business. I have been burned by business as well. My personal life, when about 13 years ago, really the, the reason for me making some really horrible decisions that affected me for years after was because I was too busy. I heard from God, but I was too busy to process what he was saying. He was warning me about situation, but I was so busy that I took the first interpretation of the situation and it was the wrong one. So we can get so busy. Even as, as a doctor, I, I regularly turn down working on Sunday mm. because I know that there are lots of other people who can do the job. Not, not, I mean, not, we're not talking about emergency situations in accident and emergency, but I, I try to make sure that I observe the Sabbath and I don't work if I don't have to. If people are really desperate and they've rung around and they say there's nobody else who can help as Dr. Richardson, could you help? I would, but I always make sure that they, they are aware that I'm a Christian and that I do observe a day of rest. Mm -hmm. So on that note, we've been through six days of creation and the seventh day of rest, Richard. I just want to say thank you so much because I've really enjoyed all mm. four programs. They've been, uh, they've helped to ignite my faith. They've helped me to say, yes, Lord, you're amazing. Mm. And I hope that they've done that for the viewers as well. And you've been watching uh, To The Point with Dr. Richard Kent um, and myself, Laura, and I hope you really have enjoyed um, this. Do encourage Richard and show how much you've enjoyed by writing to us at uh, to the point at revelationtv.com. You can also interact with us in lots of different ways on Revelation TV. Of course, Revelation TV has YouTube and it has apps as well for iPhones and Androids. And of course, it's also on Roku. So you can always interact with us at different uh, levels. So thank you once again for joining us on To The Point. And Richard, we'll see you and you'll certainly see me again soon in the future. Watch us 8.30 on Mondays, repeated at 1.30. God bless you.